World 3, Anguis looks. Like most of the sane people in the world, I hate snakes. I have a healthy fear of them. Slippery, slimy, and horrid-looking things, with those forked tongues and that hissing. Oh, that constant hissing. I've had a fear of snakes since my early childhood. Not revealing too much, but... I got bitten by a venomous snake, got admitted into the hospital, got better, and now I keep away. Well, the book has either the worst timing celestially possible, or it just has the sickest sense of humor. That Saturday afternoon, me and some pals decided to go into the woods for a picnic. The book fluttered in my bag, and plumes of purple and green smoke started to spew, getting in front of my eyes until I couldn't see anything else. When the smoke cleared, I was in a vast field, with a forest to my left and a desert to my right. I instinctively walked towards the desert, and walked farther and farther, until I couldn't see the field or the forest. I thought I had made a mistake, but I kept walking till I ended up near an oasis. Strangely enough, I had been walking for at least a few days now, and I felt neither tiredness nor thirst or hunger, but as soon as I walked into the shade of one of the trees around it, my entire body was immediately filled with an ungodly hunger, pain and fatigue like never before. I fell to my knees and crawled to the pool of water. I saw something in the middle of the pool. A glowing pearl. Oh, so beautiful and so smooth. I still smile as I remember it. In its perfect smooth center were... Images. The most disturbing things that I've ever seen. War crimes, rape, the sickest, the most perverse. Well, let's not go any further. I think you get it. My mind was in civil war. The pearl was so beautiful, so beautiful that I couldn't look away. But I had to. Finally, I won that tug of war, and found myself in a... How do I put this? Imagine the weirdest dream you've ever had. Mix it with the most horrifying feeling you can dream up, and sprinkle in the feeling of orgasmic pleasure. And you're where I was. For almost five minutes, I roamed that place. To quell your curiosity, it was a straight road with an odd mark every mile. Around me was a carnival with headless humans with mouths on their palms and eyes on their fingers walking with me. As I walked, I felt the most unsettling emotion. Peace and tranquility. Weird, right? I was almost scared of being at peace. I kept walking for a long time, a long, long time. I could almost feel myself aging with every step. When I finally collapsed on the ground, I saw coiled in front of me a huge king cobra. The snake slowly moved towards me, Every inch it moved closer, my entire being wanted to just leap up, run away, and simply forget about it. With an effort, I kept my calm and held my gaze, fixed upon the creature's eyes. They seemed normal, but I saw something. Something odd. The slits in its eyes seemed to be like portals, windows to something great. Each pupil seemed like a canyon, and as the image became clear, 
I just closed my eyes. I've heard from other harbingers that if you ever see any vision when in a world other than Earth, let's just say insanity and madness and endless death cycles would seem like a mercy. I woke up in a weirder place than before. I was on the ceiling of the world. For those who doubt, yes, this earth was a sphere. I was hovering above it all, just hovering. Not what you expected, Harbinger. I heard this voice behind me. I kept my gaze ahead. Well, to be here is very mesmerizing. We then had a conversation. The details I shall not tell you as. I would like my personal life, besides the harbingering, well, personal. Well, I assume you would like to go back to your picnic, then, he asked. Yeah, I would. I felt a dizzying sensation, as if rapidly falling, and woke up on the grass with my friends around me. One of them just started at my palm, and I remembered the orb. I just clenched my fist and got up. I need a breather. Be back in a bit. I walked back to the bus station near the forest. I opened my palm and saw the orb, green and purple. As I gazed into it, I saw its power. I never regret giving it up, but it gave me the ability to see the innermost thoughts of every person I saw and control the perception of every living thing. Then something happened. As the image of the power left my mind, the image of a grave replaced it. Nicholas M. Baker's child. I had seen his grave when I went to visit one of my own dead relatives. In my mind's eye, as I reached the grave of Nicholas, the orb jumped out of my hand and disappeared into the ground. Thank you, Harbinger, was all I heard. I smiled and walked back home after apologizing to my friends for my sudden mood change and stuff. As I slept on my bed at night, I remembered something that he had said. You think that you were chosen as a harbinger because of some divine reason or because you are lucky, but in actuality it's because you... You will find out later. There is an answer to find as to why I am a harbinger, but also as to why I gave up that power. I'll find out one day, but just remember, every orb you use is one innocent soul you decide to not free.